Way before his mutant counterpart, the first master of magnetism was working his way up from humble beginnings to become one of the grand masters of the study of electromagnetism, and maybe one of the greatest experimental scientists ever. His name was Michael Faraday. Faraday was born on September 22nd, 1791, in a little village in England called Newington Butts. His father was a blacksmith, and when Michael was old enough to become an apprentice, he started to learn the bookbinding trade. That was possibly one of the best things that could have happened, at least for the rest of humanity, because it gave him access to a lot of books. He was fascinated by the sciences, and he started attending lectures by some of the best scientists of the day. One of those scientists was chemist Humphrey Davy, who's famous for being the first to isolate elements like potassium and sodium. In 1812, Faraday sent a 300-page collection of his notes on Davy's lectures to the scientist as a sort of resume. Apparently Davy was impressed, so he hired Faraday as his secretary and got him a job as a chemical assistant at the Royal Society, a society where scientists could do research and share their ideas. That was extremely unusual for the time. The sons of blacksmiths don't often get to rub shoulders with sciencey types at the Royal Society. But it kick-started Faraday's career as an experimenter. With access to equipment and resources, Faraday conducted experiments in chemistry and made enormous contributions to the study of electromagnetism, one of the four fundamental forces of nature. In chemistry, Faraday discovered and quantified what are known as Faraday's laws of electrolysis, which use math to connect the current flowing through a circuit to the mass of the chemical substance moving through the battery. He also discovered and isolated lots of different chemical compounds, most famously benzene, a compound that has six carbons arranged in a ring and is now a major component of gasoline. But even though he was an accomplished chemist, his studies of electricity and magnetism are what really changed the way we think about the universe. If if you've ever taken a physics class, you probably learned about an idea that's simply known as Faraday's Law. And there's a reason why practically every physics class learns about it. If you want to understand electricity and magnetism, you need to know Faraday's Law. The law describes the concept of electromagnetic induction, where you can generate a current in a loop of wire by changing the magnetic field around the loop. And Faraday figured that out just by experimenting with a magnet and a loop of wire. Electromagnetic induction is one of the main ways that electricity and magnetism are connected, and the idea led the development of electric generators, and motors, as well as a lot of other technology that's used in circuits and the power grid. So his ideas are basically the foundation of the technology that we use today. No big deal. Keep in mind that Faraday did all of this just by trying stuff out in his lab, often with rudimentary experimental tools that he built himself. There's plenty of other stuff named after Faraday too, because, well, he did a lot of things. There's the Faraday disk, a simple type of electric generator where you generate electricity by rotating a metal disk through a magnetic field. You might have also heard of the Faraday cage, which is basically a shield against outside electromagnetic fields. Through his experiments, including one where he lined an entire room with metal foil, Faraday realized that if you have a conductive shell, it'll distribute electric charges in a way that keeps electromagnetic fields outside the shell from affecting the inside of the shell. These days, we use Faraday cages to shield all kinds of sensitive electronics from outside interference. We also use the Faraday Farad, a unit of measurement that tracks capacitance, or how much electric charge can be stored in a system. Faraday continued experimenting into the 1840s until his health started deteriorating. He eventually died in 1867 at the age of 75. In a lot of ways, his life and legacy embodied the spirit of scientific exploration. A keen mind willing to risk trying new things to see what we can learn about the universe. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow, brought to you by our patrons on Patreon. If you want to help support this show, just go to patreon.com scishow, and don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe.